just first of all, I made this video just quickly to cover this. It's made with some crappy webcam recording screen things. The audio is a bit crap. If you're not interested in the what I think about the fine detail of this, then don't bother watching it. I'm sure you've all seen the electric Camaro drift car video that was put up by Donut Media and were slightly underwhelmed by the amount of information that was in it. I was watching Gergen EG's Clutch Kick podcast on Facebook. There's no podcast. I was watching it because it's got a video. But anyway, um, they were going over a lot of stuff and there was a lot of questions that I thought were kind of not obvious, but a lot of stuff you can answer by looking at the setup that they've got on the car and it's not something that would have been changed. So you can see here, this is a screenshot from the Dark Media video. This is the bottom of the car. These are the standard Camaro lower control arms, and as they said, the FD rules, you have to have the standard subframes. That's obviously a heavy, mo heavily modified standard Camaro subframe. Stock arms, you can see this is the spring seat. They've still got the springs in the standard spring seats. These front arms are obviously something custom. As far as I could work out, they look like stock Camaro knuckles, and these would probably be custom drive shafts that are a Tesla whatever the spline for the Tesla is on one end and the Camaro end on the other. They were talking about flipping the drive unit upside down. So this big thing here on the front of the drive unit is the, this is the inverter on this side and this is the motor on this side. So it doesn't matter which way up it goes because you can flip it over the way it is in the Tesla and the inverter and the motor are on the back side here. So obviously they've flipped it over to get the inverter and the motor to the inside of the car to make the weight distribution better. And where the power comes in, which is these two black cables coming into the inverter side, obviously getting those away from the back of the car is a lot safer as well, so that's why they've flipped it over. As far as the what's inside the Tesla drivetrains, they're really simple. Like there's lots of people go, oh, it's got a, because it's got a clutch, how does the handbrake work, how does this work, blah, blah. It's really just, how do I move this? Uh, it's really just... The motor drives directly the wheels. So this, on this side here is the motor. This side here is the inverter. The inverter doesn't have a case on it. You can see all the bits and pieces inside it. This shaft here is the shaft that comes straight out of the motor. It drives a reduction gear onto this gear here, which is on the same shaft as this one, which is driving another gear to the diff. So there's no where inside this case for there to be a clutch or anything. The motor is always 100% connected to the wheels, and if the wheels stop with like a handbrake pull, for instance, the motor has to stop. People could go, oh, they modified it and put a clutch in there, but there's no room inside the case, and the odds of them modifying it are pretty low. Like, you go, oh, the car's got an SR20, it's a four-cylinder, maybe they've modified it to be six-cylinder. Like, that's not practical, it's not going to have happened. This will be a stock Tesla drive unit. They would have changed the diff center. So I know Quaif make a good LSD for the Tesla units, whether they're running a Quave one or a different one, I don't know. I'd assume they've changed the diff center. They could have also changed the gear ratio, but there's definitely not a clutch in here. So the stock Tesla uses hydraulic rear calipers and an independent pair of electromechanical handbrake calipers, like a lot of modern cars have a little electric actuator that pulls the handbrake. Tesla uses that, but it's a separate little caliper. On the Dono Media video, they said that they're using a hydraulic setup for the handbrake. So odds are... Being a well set up car, I assume, it'll have independent caliper for handbrake and foot brake. That doesn't make much of a difference to us anyway. When you pull the handbrake, the handbrake will stop the wheels. Uh, the, when you pull the handbrake, the motor controller will cut the power to the engine. It will stop the wheels. The wheels will stop the drive shafts. The drive shafts will stop the diff. The diff will stop the intermediate gear. And the intermediate gear will stop the motor, which is the um, center of the motor will stop turning. So. When you pull a handbrake, the entire driveline will come to a stop, and when you let go of the handbrake, the entire driveline will start up again. There's no disengagement of the drive, like if you had a clutch that you'd push at the same time as a handbrake. The way they explained it in the, in the Donut Media video sounded to me like they had the clutch set up, and when you push the clutch, it's almost like a button that tells the motor controller to give full power for a split second. And because it's instant torque, you'll get a, a bang of torque like you've dropped the clutch, but it's not actually, there's no mechanical bits and pieces changing. So even though you get that torque from the motor, it's not going to be the same kick as a clutch kick. Because when you clutch kick, you're actually getting more power 
than what the engine produces at a given time. So for the second that you've got the clutch in, the engine is speeding up the flywheel. Then when you drop the clutch, you have the energy of the flywheel and the power from the motor being released into the drivetrain. And the electric motor, even though it can give you its torque really quickly, it can't save up this extra torque into a flywheel like a petrol motor does because it doesn't have any weight to its rotating assembly like a petrol motor and it doesn't have a way to disengage itself from the drive line to build up inertia in a flywheel to then give a big lump of torque beyond what the motor can actually produce. The same way like a, a, um, like a rattle gun works, it builds up power in a weight and then hits the bolt. So even though the motor might make 10 foot pounds, you get 100 foot pounds of torque out of it. And just like the Tesla motor, if you have 800 newton meter Tesla motor, it's only going to make an 800 newton meter clutch kick, unlike a petrol motor where it might make 800 newton meters, but you can spin all that energy into a flywheel and then drop 2000 newton meters through a drive line. So it's not going to have the same effectiveness as a clutch kick, but you will be able to replicate something similar to a clutch kick. People say that electric motor torque is instant, and it is instant pretty much, but it's not the same sort of instant as bang, dropping a clutch. It might be a 0.1 of a second delay for the controller to work out what it's doing and adjust the timing and everything to get it to work. Ah, the timing. So an electric motor... It draws amps, put more amps, it makes more power. Electric motors like this, they don't have brushes doing the timing. The timing is done by a computer, and the computer can actually adjust the timing to pull on a certain magnet sooner or later, and through adjusting that timing, you can time it more and more and more like a normal engine. It'll make more and more power, and it'll start to get hot, and you'll start to damage it. So the timing is adjustable, and the EVWest controller that they said they're running has the ability to make adjustments to things like that. I'll pull the controller up now that I've mentioned it. Here's the video. The controller is, this is the touchscreen display that they're running. The controller portion of it is the same. You just spec it for which um, size motor you're running, and, um, and it just works with that motor. It does all the basic stuff like they explain, neutral drive, reverse. Neutral drive and reverse in people's heads is a mechanical thing. In an electric motor, neutral and drive is the same thing. So... The only difference is if you're in neutral and you hit the accelerator, it won't give any power. So it's like the car's in neutral, and in drive it'll give power, but nothing mechanically has changed, like if you switch between drive and neutral in an actual gearbox. And same with reverse. There's no reverse gear that has to slot into the gear train. It'll just put the power, start the motor in the other direction, and you'll run backwards. So yeah, there's no mechanical moving parts, there's no clutch, there's no drive, there's no neutral, there's no reverse. It's motor has power, motor doesn't have power, that's it. The EV West controller has the ability as well to regenerative brake. So when you take the power away from the motor, because it's not a permanent magnet motor, you turn all the electromagnets off and the motor will free spin with pretty much just the resistance of the bearings. You can then tell it to recharge the batteries and it'll have resistance like a petrol driven motor. So Doing things like that means the handbrake, like people think, oh, the handbrake, if you pull it, it can't stop the whole drive line because there's all this force that it has to stop. The motor with no actual load applied to it, which the controller can do, has very little inertia. It's a lot lighter than a petrol engine. And even if the bits themselves are a bit heavier, because everything's such a small diameter, it has like low radial inertia. So the handbrake calipers will have no problem stopping the entire drive line and the gears in the drive line will have no problem instantly stopping the motor and then instantly starting it again. Um, I mentioned this is maybe a bit over the, all over the place because I'm just thinking while I'm talking. I mentioned the timing before. The reason they're running the radiator and stuff on it is because they've obviously given themselves some provisions to run the motor harder than what it's designed to be run. That's why they're having to cool it more. Uh, what else do I need to mention? I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over the sort of basics of how these Tesla drive lines are laid out and how like little really is inside them. There's no clutch, no mechanical bits, nothing slides in and out or engages gears. It's just a motor, it drives a reduction gear, it drives the diff. It's that simple. So things like a handbrake and that doesn't have to disengage the clutch. It just stops the whole motor, the whole drive line stops, the whole drive line starts up again.
And yeah, that's it. Just thought I'd make this quick video. Quality's not very good because I got this um, free re screen recording thing so I could draw in the picture. But hopefully that clears up a few things about how this is set up and how the electric stuff works.